Thank you, Missy. Start her up. Okay, I guess you could say I've always had an affinity for animals and nature. <laughs> My folks took me out hiking before I could walk. We were surrounded by woods where I grew up in Connecticut, and like many children, I was always bringing home some unfortunate wild creature as a pet. So naturally, I got involved in conservation work as an adult and have traveled far and wide exploring and protecting wild places and learning about wildlife. Here I'm helping to set hair tube traps in the rainforest of Australia in search of long-footed potaroos. These days I work as a guide and naturalist. Now I'm no professional photographer nor wildlife biologist, but I do keep my camera handy on my travels and when I'm guiding. And I've been able to photograph some pretty elusive wildlife, like these river otters in Yellowstone. But what if you could photograph wild animals without being present? Camera traps, also known as game cameras or trail cameras, allow you to do just that. I've been using these motion-activated devices for many years as part of various wildlife research projects. Many animals are primarily nocturnal and, of course, quite shy, so this is a great way to photograph them without bothering them. Now, I'll get back to the camera traps, but there's a lot of ways to gather information on animals and their habitat. One of the best ways is tracking. Here, my wife is tracking a grizzly bear. <laughs> of course, you want to be careful how close you get to the critter you're tracking so you don't get eaten. Now, I was involved in one project tracking lynx, wolverine, and fisher. These are rare and elusive carnivores, and they're really hard to spot. So we traveled into the mountains in winter looking for tracks and scat and setting camera traps. We had the best luck with wolverines because they're attracted to dead and stinky stuff. Just getting to our camera sites could be a real challenge. Batteries had to be replaced, and in those days we were replacing film as well. We had stuck snowmobiles, flipped snowmobiles, broken down vehicles. Sometimes we dealt with too much snow like there in the Bridger Range, or uh, sometimes not enough snow. It melted. <laughs> the best part of using game cameras is seeing what shows up on the pictures. Here's a bobcat in the Gallatin Range. A critter I've only seen once in the wild. Lynx also live in this area, but are really rare. I've found their tracks, but never caught one on camera, and they won't come to bait stations. Now, a lot of the photos you get are elk or deer or falling snow, but sometimes you hit the jackpot. As you can tell by the hump on her shoulders, this is a grizzly bear. This was photographed in the Gallatin Range in an area where grizzlies are not generally known to be. Not only that, but she had two cubs. There's the little guys over there. <clears throat> On the same trail, we found a cinnamon black bear right there. Wildlife use trails just like we do, so you want to set your cameras on a route that animals have been using. That's where tracks and scat can give you some pretty good clues on where to start. Now here's another fascinating critter. You can tell by the time and date stamp that it's fall. This moose is in rut. This is when the moose are in rut. You can tell by the time and date stamp this bull came through about an hour and 20 minutes after this mature cow. And they're in Moose Creek. <coughs> so here's that same bull giving us a nice pose. He looks a bit love struck, may actually be bugling. Um, camera traps allow you to take multiple exposures of animals at close range without disturbing them nor endangering yourself. Most cameras have a built-in flash for nighttime shots. Another project I worked on was documenting wildlife use of closed and ripped logging roads. The Gallatin National Forest alone has closed and ripped 115 miles in recent years. So we use camera traps to see what kind of animals are using those old roads. The results are dramatic. These mule deer, we're using a ripped road on the Helena National Forest. For some reason, this site was like a party spot for deer and elk. We'd have four or five animals at a time parading around in front of the cameras. So this road has gone from being habit, gone back to being habitat for wild critters, or maybe just a party spot. But this uh, bull elk showed up in the same location. Animals' eyes shine at night due to the tapetum lucidum a reflective surface right behind the retina that recycles available light to help them see at night. 
I think this would make a good Harry Potter command. Tap it him, loose it him. Now he can see at night. <laughs> now, not everyone is happy with us using camera traps. Uh, these devices are illegal in Montana during rifle season. <laughs> we had permission, though, and our cameras were labeled for research purposes only. But we did have some cross-country skiers moon our camera one time. <laughs> I know, you're hoping for that moon shot, but... Um, one of the things I love about this kind of photography is that it's like candid camera for wildlife. Some of them clearly do react to the presence of the camera. They're like, hey, check it out. Look at me. So, <laughs> get my picture yet? So uh, this coyote has to watch out since some people might shoot him on sight and not with a camera. He's traveling a road on the Gallatin that was closed and ripped in 2011. So he's not going to meet any motor vehicles. When we first set up a camera here, I filmed mostly four-wheelers and trucks. Now it's all pedestrians and animals. Kind of nice. You can get a basic game camera for 100 bucks and use it in your own backyard. This raccoon was traveling along the little creek behind my house. We've only seen a raccoon in our yard once, but using the camera, I discovered they come through more often. So camera traps, including video cameras, are being used for wildlife studies all over the world. This kind of photography is revealing amazing things about wildlife right now, such as a long distance mule deer migration in Wyoming that we didn't even know about. So you can join the fun, get out there and find some tracks, play with a camera trap, and do your own spying on the wild. Thank you. Thanks a lot.